Hello there everyone and welcome to another Squeezebox Advent Calendar episode. Uh, it's feeling very much like it's getting towards Christmas now. Um, and I have one last uh, Stradella based instrument to show you. Um, I, you may remember that I showed you the mix system that I had, the Hona Cornelia and the Hona Lucia. Well, today it's this one, um, another Hona Cornelia. Yes, that does seem greedy, I will admit to that. I'll tell you why I've got it. Um, the Hona Cornelia system really, really allows me to, as a professional musician, when someone comes and asks me to play a particular piece of music, um, it's not really their job to work out what keys Melodians normally play in. And so it's my job to have the instruments that I have here that I've been showing you in, in all the outlandish keys. But there still sometimes comes a time when someone says, can you play this one? It's in C sharp major. Uh, or something like that and uh, I thought the Cornelia would uh, sort me out with that because it's fully chromatic on both hands but playing um, a DG Cornelia in F sharp or C sharp or anything at the extremities of the keys the, f it get, the fingering gets difficult and the left hand becomes almost impossible as I end up towards the edge of the Stradella basses because as you know they go in fifths with G and C in the middle and so uh, it comes a point where F sharp's here and C sharp's here. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's quite difficult to play anything. So that was the reasoning behind getting this Cornelia. Um, it's another one that Mike Robotham did all the um, important work on. Uh, and it's the last one I had done as well. This one is tuned in the key of, so it's a semitone below DG. Um, which is C sharp, F sharp. So the inside row, the middle row is in F sharp, outside row is in C sharp. And uh, to make it a direct semitone down transposing instrument of my other one, basically all the reeds in the Stradella bass have been shifted along um, to a position where they're uh, also a semitone out of place. So this marked button here you know you, you often see on Stradellas there's a marked button there and that's that's to tell you where C is uh, well C is now B <laughs> and uh, uh, so yes it's uh, basically completely transposed down a semitone from my normal instrument which means that it's um, uh, now possible for me to say uh, someone comes and says can you play this thing in, in you know goodness knows what major or minor, um, I can do it. I can I can get an acoustic instrument and I can belt out a tune in any key. And this one, so that, that was the reason behind getting it done. But actually, um, I'm so pleased I did because this is, see the Christmas tree on the front, that's the same as on my Lucia. And um, uh, it's the later batch of, um, of this instrument. And I have to say, the Cornelia is nice that I normally play in DG, but this one is nicer, and there's something about that lower down tone that makes it feel a lot more composed to play. I don't know if it's an instrument that's just in, in better nick in general. Um, it's got all the same things that the other Cornelia's got. It's got a slider on the back of the keyboard to take the third voice in and out. Um, so that uh, I've had it done up with a nicely... Uh, poshified uh, padded strap it obviously came with a standard just plain leather strap uh, the left hand air button's been done exactly the same way as it has done on the other Cornelia and the Lucia and it's had some proper nice hardware put on the bellows so yeah it's basically poshified from its owner beginnings in terms of something to play and as you can see I've got the magnets on here so I do play it uh, occasionally on stage and that's uh, because Jackie Oates um, recorded one of her um, songs, Here We Go, Round and Round and Round, um, uh, in, I think it's F sharp, I think, uh, we recorded the album. So uh, the, the, it's had a use. Um, and uh, I'll play something on it later on, but uh, let, let's have a quick look inside. I'm not going to go too far into it because we've looked at Cornelia before, but uh, it's another Cornelia. Okay, so uh, we're going to have a look inside this Hona Cornelia, but I wanted to just um, compare it against the other Cornelia that we showed you earlier in the series. Uh, so I'm going to bring it up from here. Here's the two Cornelias together. So you can see the difference in that grill. We've got the Christmas tree grill on this later one. And uh, 
the slightly more angular looking uh, instrument here. Basically the corners are sharper on, on this older model. This has more rounded corners, kind of the contours a bit more like a modern Honer Erica. Um, again there's a curve here on the left hand on the new one whereas it's sort of all squared off and this is a sort of feature you see of any design that's going from kind of pre-war towards post-war styling is that uh, you you lose corners and everything becomes kind of rounded which uh, I think you know potentially it's a plastics thing but it's also uh, yeah just just style really anyway we're not looking at that one so we'll get into the Hona Cornelia um, uh, the, there's not much different on the insides with this uh, compared to the other um, here we have a very uh, sort of ad hoc way of trying to attach my microphone uh, magnets on onto this instrument without kind of fouling up the case too much um, so uh, just got this piece of um, well it's a piece of shaped wood you know you can go get from a DIY store they have all different um, uh, pre-designed shapes of wood for putting around the walls and things like that there's an interesting thing on this one in that um, it looks like the bellows pins were originally right in the corners here and they've been filled in and moved to a more sensible place really okay we'll go we'll show you what's inside here so i suppose uh, the first thing to notice is this is quite a good angle to see that the cornelia has this sort of very wide shape in this dimension um because it's got the three rows of pallets um each having three voices on it so uh, it needs to be wide in this dimension but it's still very small in this dimension still shorter than a poker work this way so that's the pins out we'll uh, get into this right hand side and there you go just like on the other one you've got a very uh, large number of reeds We've got our slider mechanism, which I've shown you before on, on different models, but the slider here goes up and down, operates this little uh, uh, lever that comes through the other side and uh, operates this to push the sliders on the reed blocks inside and out. I shan't take these reed blocks out because I've shown you, you can go and see the other Cornelia video there. Uh, um, but what you can see is, again, we've got extensions to the original reed blocks here, which uh, Mike did for me, that allows larger reeds to take the range into a core, uh, into melodium range. You, you need larger reed plates at this low end. And so he's had to just glue a piece of wood onto the end before taking out the hole to allow the, the larger reeds to go into the place. On the left hand side, um, I'm not sure I've shown you the inside of uh, the left hand side, there's a, there's a hole for the air button that's been enlarged because uh, accordion air buttons aren't really used in playing and so they're only used to open or close the instrument but with a melodeon it's quite important to, to have a, a good large air button to allow you to control the amount of air that you take in. The way these are arranged on here on a standard Stradella is literally um, you get reeds in um, rising semitones uh, so you should have 12 there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 yeah so each one of these reeds is in a different um, octave You've got four octaves of reeds uh, a bass one the one above the bass and then uh, two um, in a higher octave as well for the chords and when you press the buttons on the bass mechanism the me mechanism chooses which pallets under here open up so it's a bit like a mechanical uh, problem solving device so you say um, well originally this would have been C major and it chooses the C, E and G pallets to open with the mechanism 
and so you only get those ones sounding and when you play a bass C you get uh, opening the, the various octaves of bass uh, reads with just C. Um, but of course this has been changed into a transposed instrument, it's in C sharp uh, F sharp on the right hand side which to, to make that make sense I've got it so that this C is no longer C it's a B and everything is shifted down a semitone from where it would be so that would normally be um, a G but it's not it's uh, an F sharp so it goes B, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp etc, D sharp um, all the way down and the way we've achieved that is simply by taking all the original reeds and re-waxing them in in a position so uh, instead of for example C being at this side and ending up with B there we've put the B read there and it ends up with B flat there and because the mechanism doesn't know what notes it's actually playing you can shift the whole Stradella bass system round without uh, it mucking up any of the actual chord relationships um, so yeah I think it's probably an unusual thing to have an instrument where you've changed the center of the Stradella bass by moving the reeds themselves but it's something you can do. Right let's put it back together again then Right, that's us back together again. I'll just show you again this uh, clever little mechanism for taking what would be just a little button um, to extend the air button. The air button itself is just this little white thing here and it would just be used for opening and closing the bellows in its original B system chromatic accordion life. But uh, since we've made it a, a melodion style keyboard on the right hand side, I'm needing to take gulps of air from wherever my hand happens to be on the keyboard. And so this, just like the Lucia and the other Cornelia, is a nice piece of wood. It's mahogany actually. Um, and it's just on a hinge here. It's a little brass hinge that's been put in side. Um, and that doesn't even have its own spring it just uses the spring already there in the button and it naturally pushes back but because the wood's rigid if I play it from there it still pushes the button all the way in that's great so it means I can be playing on these really um, extreme Stradella basses and my thumb can still reach the bar let's go and play a tune on it so without further ado, let's uh, let's get on and uh, start playing it. Um, unlike my Lucia, which has the really posh new bellows, this has actually got the original bellows in the uh, orange and gold sort of, uh, sort of same colours you'd expect from something like a poker work or an Erica. And um, so yeah, I can't put it off any longer. I'm going to attempt something now. The thing about all these advent calendar entries is that uh, sometimes. I've played something really simple or something really silly or I've left mistakes in uh, but sometimes I've tried to play something really complicated and it's gone wrong because I'm thinking about the box rather than the tune but uh, I'm going to give this a go uh, let's see if it, if it comes off uh, it's because this is a meek system instrument Stradella left hand melodian type right hand um, and I'm absolutely in love with the playing um, of the early musette player called uh, Emile Vaché and uh, there's a piece of music he recorded on his mix system uh, in the early part of the 20th century that really well it's technically amazing especially if you consider the technology of the instruments at the time weren't wasn't uh, you know I haven't seen many amazing fast keyboards from that time he's well, he's playing a tune called Les Triolets which means the triplets and uh, when you listen back to it, especially with the modern technology where you can slow down what he's playing, um, he's not playing triplets, he's playing quintuplets, <laughs> in, and they're, they're quite amazing. So I'm going to have a bash at uh, Le Triolet on this instrument because uh, through a mixture of either being an old pitch or just speeds of records not matching up, the recording that we have uh, to listen to today kind of comes out in approximately C sharp. Um, so... <laughs> 
that's the outside roll on this instrument, so I'm going to have a go at that. So this is uh, Le Triolet. <laughs> There you go i'm not doing that again uh had to sit down to make it playable uh but uh i'll stay sitting down because i'm in this place um yeah um that's le triolet it's, uh, it's a work in progress uh emil vachet is the master anyway thank you for having a look at this cornelia and i'll see you in the next one of these tomorrow bye for now